as well. Yeah. What, what we, what's happened is that you will increase the apoptosis, the cell death, mm -hmm. the new death on your deaths on neurons. <laughs> but if you uh, add growth hormone, you will stimulate the regeneration, the new production of nerve cells. What we call the neurogenesis will be stimulated. And that's, that's adults. Yeah, in adult adults. Adult users. Okay. Yes, and you should remember neurogenesis does not uh, do not uh, happen in all areas of the brain, yeah. but in particular in the hippocampus. Yeah, in the hippocampus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we think this is now we are extending. We have several patients on this. Uh, indication uh, that the patient has a tumor, you should never give him growth hormone. This is contraindication. Take off the growth yeah. after the brain. Yeah, so that's a bad thing. So I think you need to have patients, you need to check that these patients who should be exposed to growth hormone therapy, they shouldn't have any history or any presence of uh, any kind of tumor. But uh, you have, of course, you can use IGF-1, seems to be uh, also possible. But um, yeah, there are uh, lots of things to discuss that, in, in particularly if you're talking about protein engineering. Maybe I'll just email something. Pardon? Maybe I'll just email you about what kind of actual cancer occur, what I do have. Well, there are uh, any kind of cancer tumors uh, in response to uh, growth factors. So uh, that, uh, I cannot say, put up any specific uh, here. But, um, well. Yes, please. So are there any known other, in response to the questions that you've raised, are there, are there other agonists or antagonists of growth hormone receptors? Yeah, uh, the one who is working with antagonists of growth hormone is John Kopchick in, in the United States. And he has used uh, um, genetically modified transgenic mice, which express a variant of growth hormone which act as an antagonist. Mm. Uh, Pfizer and with Indian electors and Pharmacia, they are working with small molecules acting as antagonists, antagonist. but they have not yet uh, as antagonists, but also as agonists, but they have not yet been successful in that. There are some. Uh, there are also some uh, known antagonists for the IGF-1. But this, for this, is necessary that the growth hormone, in this case, use IGF-1 as a second mediator. It is not the case in, uh, uh, everywhere. Okay. Any? Yes, please. All right. <laughs> if I got your question, but uh, uh, what I say is that my idea, what I'm trying to show here, mm -hmm. is that growth hormone could stimulate the uh, uh, regeneration of nerve cells in certain areas in the brain, which could uh, be connected the improvement of cognitive function, some well-being, etc. But you need to do that. Uh, it's a long-term uh, therapy. Okay. But uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. if you say that, sometimes are also taking, abusing growth hormone. In particular, doping guys taking anabolic steroids. Yeah. And we published a, a paper quite recently, and we noticed that, I think it was in general and chronology, that the growth hormone can counteract some of the effect of anabolic steroids. So those who combine this could get some um, benef beneficial things of it. But uh, growth hormone is not as effective to increase the muscle uh, strength or the muscle volume, as many people think or believe it is. So. Okay. Yes. But she raises an interesting point. In teenagers, many of them are predisposed to drug abuse. They get started early and they have the worst effects. 
Sure, growth hormone might improve cognition through a restorative mechanism, but could it adversely affect teenage brain development? Yeah, um, it, it, it could be some worse things, because if a growth hormone could synthesize some certain areas in the brain, which could be negative for the people who is vulnerable to addiction, mm -hmm. that's for sure. That could it be. Then another thing which is important to know, all, all of us do not respond, shouldn't respond. Um, those who respond best to growth hormone are those who are quite low from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because when you increase growth hormone, uh, after this, there, to get an effect, the hormone need to bind to two receptor units. But if you have two excessive growth hormone, this, uh, um, uh, this uh, interaction can be uh, can be destroyed because the before the hormone binds to the second receptor unit, another hormone could interact with this, and you will have a decline in this curve. That's also one negative thing with with this. And people to, uh, also another thing people tell you, why if you can improve the cognitive function with growth hormone, why don't you give that to Alzheimer's patient? Well, in Alzheimer's patient, you have already developed this plaque. And this plaque has already destroyed the pathway that growth hormone need to use to be positive or to be beneficial. So that's not that uh, for some patients maybe, but if they, uh, Alzheimer has gone too too far, it's impossible. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then I will try to do justice with Dr. Kosi's work.